Hello, welcome to episode 10 of the Carla Knits podcast. My name is Carla and I am a knitter, crocheter, and yarn enthusiast living in Nebraska with my husband Jeff, my daughter Jenna, and our cat Reese's. Welcome. Uh, if you are a returning subscriber or a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are new to the podcast, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, it's hard to believe it's already 10 episodes. This, this feels like a big milestone for me. I know it's only 10, but it's 10. So <laughs> it feels pretty good. Uh, so thank you for those of you who have been following along on this podcasting journey with me. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on social media, I am CB Crafty Girl on Instagram and on Ravelry. And new this week, we have a podcast group on Ravelry for Carla Knits. So it's called Carla Knits. So I created a Ravelry group uh, this morning. Uh, so please feel free to stop by and join if you'd like to uh, introduce yourself. Uh, that would be great. And I will be talking a little bit more about the Ravelry group a little bit later in this podcast. So welcome. I hope you all are having a good week and we will get started. So today I am wearing a cowl. This is a cowl that I test knit for Ashley Coons. Uh, it is called On Point and uh, it's reminiscent of the point of a ballerina's point shoe. Uh, so Ashley Coons is the designer and she and I were swap partners a few years back um, and it's been really nice getting to know her a little bit and she's just a very sweet person and this this cowl I enjoyed test knitting this for her so much. I made this last summer. Uh, it requires five mini skeins, so five 20 grams, five, I can say this, <laughs> five 20 gram mini skeins of fingering weight yarn. Um, so if you have a coordinating set, you could use that. Or if you have leftover sock yarn, which I know I have lots of leftover sock yarn in various colors, and probably some of you do too, you could kind of mix and match. Um, from your stash uh, to make this cowl. Uh, the yarn I did use was from Yarn Cafe Creations and it was um, a Christmas set a few years ago called Santa's Reindeer. And so I selected five minis from there and they actually coordinate really well. So the pinks, there were a couple similar pinks and then the couple similar of the of greens um, from that set. So I put those together into this cowl. Uh, I, I'm never sure exactly how to style a cowl. So I want I want the pattern, the lacy pattern detail to show. And so I, I pinned it up, otherwise it was flopping down and I couldn't see that beautiful lace. So I really think the lace detail is, is beautiful. And like I said, this was so much fun to knit. I would absolutely knit it again. So if you are in search for a spring cowl, this would be a great, pattern to knit. This would be a wonderful gift knit for something, uh, for someone. So I would encourage you to check out this pattern. So uh, the On Point Cowl. All right, this week I have a finished object and it is my pair of worsted weight socks. So this sock pattern is by Sarah Troya of Bumblebee Acres Farm. It is called the Sock -a Day Socks Pattern, which is written for DK weight yarn and worsted weight yarn, specifically talking about holding uh, two fingering weights to equal a worsted weight. And so this is a worsted weight. I did use fingering weight yarn held double, and the yarn is by the Woolen Homestead in the Life is the Bubbles colorway. So these beautiful blue, lovely speckled socks are now complete. They are very soft and squishy. They will be so warm next winter. I will really look forward to wearing these. Um, and I would absolutely knit another pair using fingering weight held double. Uh, it does go so much faster than a traditional fingering weight pair of socks. So I do find that to be really fun. 
Uh, I have yet to report back on whether I could wear these in shoes. Um, I think boots in the winter would be great. They, these probably are going to be a little thick for, for shoes, uh, for traditional shoe wearing. But I am so happy uh, to have this pair of socks done and I will add it to my box of socks for 2021. All right, <clears throat> on to works in progress, whips. Uh, I have just a little bit started on my second sock. This is the Wish You Were Here sock by the Kitchen Sink Wish You Were Here socks. I think I said that correctly, but maybe not. <laughs> by the Kitchen Sink Shop. I showed you the finished, finished first one last week. And so this is what I have done this week and I just I actually just started this um maybe one night ago um just so I could get get going on this because I do need to get this done for an upcoming gift but I love the pattern you can probably see that little lace detail the colors I am using uh the main color is a left leftover skein of yarn uh, that I had used in another project. It is by the Lemonade Shop in the sugar-coated colorway. And then the color that I'm using for the cuff, which I will also be using for the heel, and the toe is by Camelot Dye Works in the siren colorway. So I am, I am hoping that next week I will be able to show this and the first one as a finished object so I can get, get the, this done as a gift. All right, so that's the progress on that sock. And I'll just share with you, it's living in this bag. Uh, this is another me made bag. Uh, I, I love Barbie. <laughs> I loved Barbie dolls as a kid and I still really love Barbies. So this is just a fun little bag that I made. I had bought this fabric years ago and then made it into this bag. So polka dot coordinating and on the inside uh, light pink lining with gold stars. So very Barbie-ish. <laughs> so that pink sock is living in that pink bag. All right, my next work in progress is a new one which you have not seen yet, but I did talk about this last week. I showed three skeins of green yarn uh, and talked about how I wanted to knit a pair of mittens for Jeff. Uh, another green skein was going for uh, a leaf hat, the foliage hat. And then the third green skein of yarn was going to go into a baby dress, baby tunic. So I chose the baby project first. And again, there are no babies currently uh, on the horizon, but I, I wanted to do this pattern. So this is the progress I have. And I hope you'll be able to see, I have made a fair bit of progress. So these pins at the top are holding, holding it closed. It will be held closed with buttons. So it's an open neckline, which is really great for babies because babies heads sometimes tend to be a little big. So you don't have to pull, pull over a tighter neckline. Um, you'll, well, you have to put it over the baby's head, but then you can, can button it. So it gives a little bit more room uh, getting it over the head and then around the neck. So I have gotten into the part that I was looking forward to the most, which was the skirt. And it has a sweet little texture detail, which is supposed to be representing, I assume, the wildflowers. So this pattern is the wildflowers tunic by Jessica McDonald, and it is uh, newborn on up. I don't remember how far the sizes go up, but I am I am knitting the size six months because that's how much yarn I had, and I did want to try to use as much as I had. So I have, it says to make the skirt uh, six inches long, so it's a couple more, but I might go, I might go just a little bit longer. So. You can choose to keep it as a tunic or you can lengthen it. It's instructed um, so it could be a dress. And then as the child grows bigger, you know, it could be the tunic then. So I, I am happy with the progress on this. Uh, this is a paid for pattern and I was a little frustrated. There were some 
errors in there. Uh, luckily, thankfully on Ravelry, if you go to, you know, people's project notes, uh, there, there was somebody who had written out what she did and uh, kind of explained what was going on. <laughs> at first, I thought, I cast this on late at night and I was like, oh no, you did it again. <laughs> you put markers in the wrong space or you, you misread something, but no, I didn't. It was just part of the pattern was um, incorrectly written, kind of mixed two things around in a couple places. So I am on track. So I anticipate this will not take too long um, to finish this off. And uh, I have some buttons on order. So hopefully they'll arrive next week and I can see which kind of buttons I want to put on this. Uh, this is also living in a me made bag. I just loved that sweet little girl and her little fox friend. Uh, and it has that green polka dot bottom and on the inside is the green polka dot and then some coral trim which kind of matches the coral pinky in her cheeks and in the fox the fox's cheeks too. So uh, these these two bags I made last year, I participate, participated in a cal. It was called the Dodgy Bags Cal. Uh, it was by Starry Eyes Alley. She has a podcast on YouTube. Um, and I guess the term dodgy bag, uh, maybe not a bag that sewed perfectly. And I do not consider myself a sewist, but I, I can kind of make a bag. So it was it was fun to sew these bags along along with that uh, I shouldn't say cal sew along it was a sal a sew along so those are a couple of my me made bags that are holding some projects. My next work in progress is my pink shawl reaching over here, and let me get this here. Let's see. All right. Here is the front. It's a little hard to show. The yarn's stuck in the bag there. But I have made a fair bit of progress. If I hold, I don't exactly know how to hold this, guys. <laughs> if I stretch it out like that, that looks good at the top, but then at the bottom, you can't really tell. Uh, so at the bottom, where that little light bulb stitch marker is, that is the progress that I have made this week. So it's it's probably a good three, three and a half inches. I am, so I was in this lace portion last week. I was just about ready to do the alternating stripes, if you will, of the, the fingering weight yarn and the lace mohair. Um, and now I'm in this mohair section. So it'll be a big section of mohair. Uh, let me share the yarn that I'm using. I realized last week that I forgot to share the yarn uh, that I'm using for this project. So this beautiful, beautiful, bright, bright pink is by Fiber Me This in the Jaja colorway. And then this lovely, delicate uh, mohair silk is by Pineapple Yarns in the Fortunately Pink colorway. And I, I confess that I am getting a little bogged down with this stockinette section. Um, I think I'd much rather be doing uh, garter ridges, so just strictly knitting, but this is knitting on one side and purling on the other side. And this section is quite big. Uh, there are two options, and I was, I was reading this wrong, and I'm glad I, I finally figured out what I was doing. So there is an option to knit, uh, let's see, 16 rows. So that's 16 sets of knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl down this section. Or option two is to knit 22 rows. Again, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, back and forth. Uh, and I was reading the pattern as the option was 16 rows and then an additional 22 rows. And at this point I was like, oh, I do not want to knit that or do stockinette for that long. But I was wrong. You either do 16 rows of it or you do the 22 rows of it. So I am going to go for the 22 rows. I have done, let's see, five, six, seven, I've only done eight, eight rows. So I have a fair bit to, 
to complete on this this mohair section um yeah those rows as they get longer uh they just take longer to complete um and i was i was just thinking um you know i've seen some podcasters who who have knit or maybe are knitting Stephen West shawls. And if you have uh, followed any podcasters or if you yourself have knit a Stephen West shawl, uh, you know how many stitches can be on your needles at one point. And this, this isn't, this isn't even 300 stitches yet. And I am, I am tired. <laughs> I get tired going back and forth on these rows. And some of those Stephen West shawls have, you know, upwards 500, 700, 900 stitches. And I absolutely cannot imagine that. Um, at this point, I don't feel like I have the stamina to do a Stephen West shawl, although I am really tempted to do the Vertices Unite, which I think is just all garter stitch. So it'd be strictly knitting, but I'll have to think about that one. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to stick with the pink shawl. I love how it's turning out. Um, but I am definitely a product knitter. So while I enjoy the process of knitting, which I do, it to me is very relaxing. I very much knit things that I want the finished product of. So I want this finished shawl. So I am a product knitter. How about you guys? Do you just enjoy the process of knitting so much that you consider yourself a process knitter or are you a product knitter? You see something and like, gotta have that. I'm gonna knit it. So that is the progress on that shawl. So again, that was a fair bit for this week. Uh, on Sunday this past week, I spent that day working on my scrappy crochet granny afghan so i will show that show this it's getting a little bit harder to show i don't think i'll stand up with it but where that little progress keeper is there that is how much progress i have made on this blanket and it's about five inches um I sure would like it to be more, but I spent quite a fair bit of time on Sunday uh, crocheting that. So that is, that was all this Sunday that I, that I crocheted that section. So that really is, is quite good. And if you remember from several episodes back, I am using a magic knot ball. So first of all, this pattern is the Granny Stripes uh, Afghan by Lucy of Attic 24. And I made a magic knot ball. I am using fingering weight yarn, which I have put together with a technique called the magic knot. And I followed a tutorial on YouTube by the crazy sock lady. And so I had made this ball. And if some of you remember, it was quite big. It was 288 grams. And I measured this this morning and it's 83, just a little over 83 grams. So it is definitely dwindling. So I have essentially crocheted in two 100 gram skeins of yarn, fingering weight yarn into this since I made that magic knot ball. And now I have this remaining. So it is very fun to see how the colors change. You never know quite what you're gonna get. Um, of course, I was delighted and very excited to get into this pink section. Uh, I was equally as excited to get into this section because this yarn has gold Stellina in it, which I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up, but gold Stellina gives it a little sparkle. So there's some yarns in, in here that have some sparkle. So that was really fun to see as the ball was getting smaller, some spark, some sparkle in the yarn peeking through. Um, so some interesting colors coming up. So that is my crochet granny stripes blanket. So speaking of crochet, lest you think this is just a knitting podcast, it is not. I love crochet just like I love knitting. And in fact, I was going to participate in a crochet blanket along. And maybe some of you who have seen this, I will show this. This is a free pattern. Uh, it's on the Sirdar website, S-I-R-D-A-R. -R. It is called the Sweet Blossom Blanket. 
and you can see really colorful, beautiful stripes. When I saw this, I jumped right on the bandwagon and I ordered yarn. Here's a bigger picture of it. I ordered the kit containing this yarn, this exact color of yarn. I just thought, oh, it's a perfect spring, spring palette, wonderful. So I ordered it from Webs, yarn.com. I ordered it on March 31st. They shipped it on April 1st. On April 3rd, it landed somewhere in Illinois and it remains there in Illinois. The tracking has not changed. So I don't know if that yarn will ever show up. So that, that order has been canceled. That box may or may not show up. So I got on the website again and looked for the kit, the blanket kit, the yarn kit, saw that there was one in stock. So I ordered it thinking, I want to do this blanket. I want to crochet this blanket. So placed my order. I got an email um, a couple days later that uh, the yarn was out of stock. Well, I'm thinking, but it showed that there was one unless somebody else ordered it exactly at the same time. <laughs> I don't know so I couldn't get this so I'm like oh does this mean I'm not supposed to crochet this blanket I don't know well this specific yarn is not it's it's Hayfield bonus DK is the brand um, so I did not get this exact yarn I did place an order with um, Jimmy beans yarn and tried to somehow coordinate these colors you know, looking online, it's not necessarily going to be exactly like this, but I'm hoping it will be close. I'm hoping, hoping it will be a pleasing, pretty palette when it comes. That has shipped and it's supposed to get here next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday or Wednesday. So this Cal Crochet Along started this week on Wednesday. So I will be behind, but that's okay because I really want to crochet it. And it looks like there's many different textures uh, and stitches involved in this. So I think this will be really, really fun. So I am looking forward to this. I am hoping that the yarn shows up. With my luck, with my luck, I think the Jimmy Beans yarn will show up and the other yarn will show up both at the same time. Wouldn't that just figure? <laughs> Too much yarn, what to do? <laughs> So that is a future crochet plan that I, I really hope to get started very soon. Um, so speaking of stripes and getting back to the Ravelry group. So I made I made our Ravelry group for this podcast this morning. And I hope I hope I did it right. Ravelry, you know, I I have been able to get around Ravelry well enough, um, but creating a group, you know, that that sort of thing was new to me. And I started um, a welcome and int introduction thread. So if you'd like to go in and become a member and chat, introduce yourself, maybe share a little bit about, you know, if you're a knitter, crocheter, how you got into it and projects that you're working on, that would be wonderful. Um, if you'd like to join, that would be great. So it's Carla Knits on Ravelry. The second thread I created was a make along. So I'm going to do what I'm calling a spring stripes make along. So I'm calling it spring stripes mal, M A L stands for make along. So not strictly knit along or crochet along, make along. So you could knit stripes, crochet stripes, weave stripes, etc. cetera. Uh, so in that chatter thread, if you would like to go in, uh, there are some guidelines posted. I'll give you just a little, little bit here. Um, so anything with stripes, I'm calling it spring stripes because I'm gonna run it from May 1st, and I realize we're already well into spring, but I'm gonna run it from May 1st until June 20th. So that will be the remainder of spring. And I didn't wanna do strictly socks because I know some of you aren't sock knitters, um, but something with stripes. Um, I am really drawn to self-striping yarn. And if you look in my background here, 
those are all my skeins of self-striping yarn. I think those are all my skeins. I dug them all out. Someone in an earlier podcast said, you should flash your stash. And I've never heard that expression. I thought that was kind of funny. So here is your, here is a flash of my self-striping stash. So I am going to pick a skein of yarn here and work on a pair of stripy socks starting May 1st. And I hope to also be working on this stripy crochet blanket um, for that. Um, I won't post I won't post my pictures in the um, finished object thread. So there will be a chatter thread. There will be a finished object thread for you to post your pictures in, and then I will draw a prize or two from that finished object thread when our make along is over. I hope, I hope I have given all the instructions. Please bear with me. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me on Ravelry in a message or Instagram in a message or post your questions in the chatter on, uh, on our group page. Okay. Well, I think, I think that is about it. I'll just share a little bit of I guess life stuff. It has been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, we had our one of our sons come home. He lives about an hour and a half, hour 50 minutes away from here, and we haven't seen him, <coughs> excuse me, since Christmas time. So he came home for a visit last weekend. And our other son and his girlfriend came over too. So last Saturday and Sunday were great family days, uh, spending time with our kids, played games had some great food, watched some baseball, played video games, board games. It was it was just a great time. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got that tickle in my throat. Uh, I, I teach piano at our local college. Our semester is winding down. So this coming week is our last week of classes and then finals week. So a lot of busyness towards the end of the semester. Uh, some piano students getting ready to take a keyboard exam. Um, class piano students getting ready to take uh, their final, perform a final piece, take a written exam. And then also my husband works in the music department at the college and he is one of the choir directors and he has a big concert this coming Sunday along with one of the other choirs and I am playing piano and organ for a couple of their pieces. So that has required some extra practice time and some extra rehearsals. So I actually came from a rehearsal uh, today, uh, right before uh, filming this podcast. So that concert is this coming Sunday, so it should be a busy weekend. But with that, I will leave you for today. I hope you all have had a great week and I hope you are enjoying your knitting, crocheting, or any kind of creative things that you love to do. I hope to see you really soon. Take care, bye-bye.